Hi, I'm Kent. A while back, I made a five part mold and was able to slip cast some parts. In particular, I made this mold. These are the four walls. There was another piece that goes in the bottom. I went to go and cast another pot. I didn't have a good seal between all the different mold pieces and I had a big mess to clean up. I thought my mold was good enough, even though it was leaking a little bit, but clearly that wasn't the case. I wasn't sure what exactly was going on. I knew my faces weren't meeting properly. If I push a couple of sides together that are tight, I wind up with a gap on one side. So it's not square for some reason. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on, but not too long ago, Kurt Hammerly was doing an experiment making these giant spheres. And he showed one of the problems he had. It turned out that a couple of his corners were not quite square to each other. I'm guessing something similar is going on. So when I made these, I used my 3D printed molds directly. I have a video on this if you're really curious, but this is a three part mold. So this is the bottom and this is the top. I tape these together and then pour plaster in here directly and then remove the tape and then flexed the 3D printed mold and remove this piece here. I did that four times to get the four sides. When I was making the plaster parts, it was clear that the tops and bottoms were flexing. These are very thin and I didn't adhere them very well. So my top and bottom surface wasn't great. So looking at the bottom of these, I'm pretty sure one of the problems I have is that this didn't seat well against the bottom part. I think it's also possible that it bowed out on the side. So there's a little bit of flex here and that is so that I could release the part. I put some mold release on here, but it's a relatively complicated geometry and getting the rigid silicone out of the rigid plastic parts a little bit hard. So I made the plastic part as thin as possible. So I think altogether that resulted in the challenges with these plaster pieces here. So I think pouring plaster directly into 3D printed molds for more simple molds is okay, but for these multi-part molds, I'm having challenges. I wanted to rethink my mold making process. A few videos ago, I showed making this plaster part using this mold. So this mold has a silicone inset into it. So the idea was to make the silicone as thin as possible since the silicone is expensive, but it's also rather flexible. The hope is by having this flexible insert between the plaster that gets formed and the 3D printed part, there's enough give in the system that I can detach both of them. But while the silicone is in the 3D printed part, it stays rigid enough to give me the right shape. This seemed to work okay for this bottom piece. In this video, we're going to make the other pieces. This is the bottom of my new mold, and this here is a 3D print of the side. So if you look very closely, these will seat together just like that. I'll need four of these pieces to go around the outside. They will all come together, so I'll have four sides and one bottom. This geometry is a little bit different than the one I did before, but it matches more closely to what Kurt Hammerly does. He is an expert at this, so I figured I would just try and replicate as close as possible to what he was doing, hoping that that would lead to greater success. So how do I make a plaster copy of this piece here? I'm going to use the same process as I did for the bottom here. In addition to this piece that I 3D printed, I also made a corresponding piece. This will be the form that I pour silicone into. And it basically is a mirror of the piece that I care about. There's about a five millimeter gap between this surface and this surface that will give me the thin silicone shell. The silicone will stay into this piece that I'll cast plaster into. These two fit together. It's probably hard to see on camera, but there's a gap between these two. I need to pour silicone into here to create the silicone sleeve. So it's going to be cast this way. So I have two concerns with this mold. One is that the air will get caught in here, so the bubbles will try and race to the top. I don't know if I can get them all out. The other problem is the way I designed this, there's actually a negative draft angle here. That's to make the resulting plaster part nicer to handle, but it may cause some challenges. We'll see. Here's my silicone. It mixes one to one by volume between the part A and the part B. My model says I need 300 milliliters. Let's go ahead and go for 400 milliliters, make sure I have enough. So that means I'll need 200 milliliters of A and 200 milliliters of B. Pick some cups here and they have marks on the side. Looks like I don't actually have a 200 mark, so I'll do 190. All right, and we'll mix these together well. Try not to introduce too many bubbles. I'm going to transfer all this into a second container that's also clean. Make sure we don't have any pockets or anything stuck on the bottom. 
and a clean stir stick just in case, and we'll mix it all up again. All right, here's the silicone and here's my mold. I think I'm gonna pour some silicone onto this face. This is the one with all the undercuts in it. And I'm likely gonna drip, so I'll put down some paper towels. I'm gonna spread this around on this face here. Nicely get it all wetted in. Okay, we'll flip it over. And then we'll slowly pour the silicone in. All right, well, that's most of the silicone I mixed, and I am not all the way up to the surface. So apparently, I pulled the wrong number out of the 3D model. Need to mix up a little bit more. We should have more than enough now. This silicone will self degas. It cures relatively slowly, so all the bubbles should come out. With my smaller piece, I didn't have too many problems with the air bubbles, so fingers crossed. The right way to do this would be to degas the silicone first in a vacuum chamber and then put this piece into a pressure pot to shrink all the bubbles. I have neither of those, so we're going to try it this way. This takes four to six hours to cure. It's later in the day and the silicone should have cured. Let's check it out. So first is the witness cup. So this looks like it has cured just fine. The other thing I noticed is apparently I have siliconed this to my bench. All right, let's see if I can pry this up. Crunch. So just like last time, I broke the top mold. All right, let's see if some compressed air can help release this. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera off for a little while and struggle with this and see if I can get anywhere. And we'll come back for an update. I got it out. Unfortunately, you can see by the carnage, I did not get it out easily. I destroyed the outer mold and the inner mold is not in good shape either. I haven't popped the silicone off yet. It looks like the inside of the silicone is in reasonably good shape. I think I might have a little air bubble there. So we can go ahead and pop this off. So as expected, that came off really easily. Yeah, I do have a bit of an air bubble there. Unfortunately, that is also the face of the pot, so it would show up in my mold. I also have a small bubble down here. So the idea is that this will fit back down into here and I could then pour the plaster. However, I'm missing all the supports on the side. So at the very least, that means I need to reprint this piece so I can slide this back in. However, with these defects, I'm not sure. Getting this out was definitely a bear. So regardless, my process needs some work. I cleaned up all the mess and I've been thinking about this for a bit. I think I'm going to redo all of this. So there's a few fundamental problems with this. The first one is the direction I'm pouring the silicone. By pouring the silicone the way I did, the part that will be facing the plaster is up, which means I will always catch air bubbles. What I really want to do is reorient the direction I pour the silicone. One obvious thing to do is to pour it upside down relative to how I had it. If I pour it from the other direction, any air bubbles I get will be on the side facing the 3D printed support, not on the side of the plaster. The problem with that is I definitely want to pour the plaster from this side, and so I will need to have a different open face. The other option is I actually pour the silicone vertically, so that way any air bubbles will either show up on the top or on the bottom. I think probably on the top. But then I would still need to be able to reorient the mold so I can pour the plaster from this way. I need to think about that one a little bit more. The next thing I want to do is change some of the draft angles. I think for the inside of the mold, I'm okay because the silicone will be flexible and I can release from the plaster. But for this outside mold, I actually had an undercut and I'm sure that didn't help. So I think I want to be much more aggressive with my draft angles on the outside. So have them face out, probably in both directions. That will mean the silicone is thicker on the top and thinner on the bottom, but I think that's okay. Hopefully that means I could release the mold easier. The other thing I'm thinking about, which I did with my other mold, is to make the supporting mold a multi-part mold. This mold actually split apart into two pieces. That's because I had these protrusions from the side and I knew I needed to do that. I might need to do the same thing for this larger mold. I'm guessing what's going on is the silicone is grabbing all the texture on the side, preventing it from wanting to slide out. So trying to slide up with all this rich texture, I think is a little bit tricky. 
that or it's just the sheer amount of surface area and I'm getting a lot of stiction. The last thing I'm considering is actually making this mold insert disposable. As I said earlier, this is the face of the pot that we want a negative in plaster of, so it needs to be in very high resolution. This part originally took two days to print, so quite a long time. Part of that is because the resolution is very high. The other part is it's because it's relatively beefy. This is a lot of infill. So I'm wondering if I make this intentionally disposable. If I make it just a thin shell that I can put in here with the idea that as I demold it, I'm intentionally destroying the inside. My molds tend not to survive anyways. So if I can drastically cut down the print time of this by making it just a thin shell and make my job easier of removing it, I think that'd be okay. It means if I wanted to make another silicone piece, I'd have to reprint that part but I might have to do that anyways. So I failed a lot in this video, and these are some of the lessons I've learned. In general, I like to show my videos going from the initial idea all the way through the final execution. I'm not gonna be able to do that in this video. I had too many failures. I think it's time to regroup, think about all these lessons, redesign all these parts, and then reprint them, which is gonna take quite a while. So this video will be the video on how not to do this. Look forward in the future for a video on how to do this, hopefully. If you have any questions or comments or any ideas on how to make this process easier, definitely let me know. Thanks.